Welcome to the 81st Annual Cold Spring Harbour Laboratory Symposium on Quantitative Biology. This year's topic is on targeting cancer and I am Gemma Alderton, um, an editor of Nature Reviews Cancer and I'm sitting here today with Raghu Kaluri, who's from the MD Anderson Cancer Centre. So Raghu, you spoke today um, and it was about uh, exosomes, which Correct. some people might think is a deviation from what you're usually considered to you know, <laughs> work on, which is fibros uh, fibrosis and fibroblasts, but you're kind of moving into this field right. with some really fascinating papers. So. Well, it shows that you've known me for a long time. <laughs> uh, that's true. I, uh, you know, as you know, I've been working in the area of tumor microenvironment yep. for uh, many years now. And, uh, and I think the work on exosomes is a logical extension because if you look at the tumor microenvironment, uh, we tend to forget that other than cells and proteins that are extracellular proteins, there are also these little vesicles that are also part of the right. extracellular milieu. So I think it was a, we feel it's a logical extension to asking the question what these little vesicles are doing and uh, whether there's anything uh, valuable we can learn mm -hmm. in a way to diagnose cancer and treat cancer. Right, so the diagnostic stuff, is some, there's been some really interesting work on this recently. Yeah. And can you give us a bit of background about where we're at? So I, I think that, uh, well obviously the whole area of liquid biopsy has yeah. become very big now. The idea that we can uh, harness information about cancer from the bloodstream or any body fluid is very attractive because you don't have to keep probing into the tumor tissue or metastatic tissue. And uh, in reality, I think that uh, this has been an exciting uh, last five years because uh, there's a lot of information that is carried in the blood uh, via exosomes mm -hmm. and via free circulating material. And um, we are excited about exosomes because exosomes come from live cells. Right. So the live cells are generating them. That means that you get a reflection of what the cell is undergoing, mm -hmm. whether it is stressed or not stressed, whether it has mutations in it, causing it to have pathways that are altered. And that will reflect in the exosome coming from that cell. And that information could be useful to understand the behavior of the cell, mm -hmm. diagnose cancer, and, uh, and understand how we, that information can be used for therapy. So I think that I would say that in the next five years, uh, you would see the serum genomics yeah. and body fluid genomics mm -hmm. and liquid biopsy uh, associated biomarkers to be of great value. Yeah. To not only diagnose disease, but also track therapy response, yeah. you know, to know something really quick, how therapy mm -hmm. has worked or not, versus trying to look at all this, you know, doing imaging and things, mm -hmm. a quick uh, test. And you can quite often detect cancer earlier, right, than, than the imaging will potentially. Potentially. Right? Yeah. So the whole idea, the idea here is that uh, if you were to uh, take blood from somebody who is 60 years old, mm -hmm. and if you have now uh, have done enough number of studies to know that if you make, uh, let's say, uh, you know, you isolate exosomes from this person's blood, uh, whether we have enough information in that exosome to predict that there is a certain type of cancer somewhere in the body. Um, even if you're not absolutely sure, uh, that would give you some risk, you know, factor assessment. Then you can follow that up with imaging and other things. Right. And I think that's going to be the wave of the future. Yeah. Um, so of course, I think that early detection, prevention is the probably the only way we will beat mm. cancer, you know, not just treating advanced disease. Yeah. So, so I think this yeah. offers great promise. Absolutely. So, um, obviously, cancer cells are not the only cells that produce exosomes. So, right. uh, a challenge in the field, as I understand it, is that determining which exosomes from a blood sample, for example, um, come from a, from a cancer cell and obviously you've published on this and there's right. more developments in this area. Well I think, okay, so I think I agree with you mm -hmm. that there is of course a need to distinguish yeah. um, anything coming from cancer cells in the blood from coming from other cells. Right. But if we were to uh, begin to unravel that whatever the uh, material that is in the blood that is coming from the cancer cells is not coming from normal cells, mm -hmm. then when you identify that in the collection of everything, then you know it's coming from cancer cells. Right. So that's one way we'll overcome that. Mm -hmm. So for example, now people can take free circulating DNA yeah. that is in the blood, or you can take exosomes from the blood and do deep sequencing and you can find information. So to make it really broadly available to everybody, you have to bring the cost down and the technology should be very amenable to you know all centers that do this diagnosis. Mm -hmm. So for that, yes, you have to find a way to enrich it uh, enrich the sample for something coming from cancer cells and that's what we did we found certain proteins are present on exosomes coming from cancer cells right. but not from normal cells 
and that allow us for a, 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 an enrichment process that will allow us to then look at that material inside the exosome and, mm -hmm. and be more sure that it's coming from cancer cells. And that allowed us to predict things a bit early about uh, this pancreatic cancer. Yeah. And do you think, so do you think that the markers on the exosomes that for in this case was specific to pancreatic cancer, whether they would be the same for other types of cancer or if the, the markers would have to be, would be different and you'd have to identify that? Too? I think, I, I, my gut feeling and not having any real data to back it up right now is that there will be some markers that are going to be present on exosomes coming from all cancer cells, all right. types. Okay. Uh, just because there are certain common pathways that trigger in most cancer cells that's going to create proteins in those pathways that will probably be uh, on the exosomes or in the exosomes. Mm. Then there are going to be some specific ones. Right. But I am more interested in the common ones. Right, yeah. And, uh, and I think the protein we found seems to be a common one. Okay. But it tends to recognize uh, exosomes coming from pancreatic cancer cells much better. Right. But doesn't mean it doesn't do well with other cancers. Right. It's just that it's not as, you know, uh, you know robust and perfect as, uh, you know, in, the, in pancreatic cancer samples. So the question is then we have to do these studies systematically with other cancers. Yeah. and see if there's anything unique we can find. But overall, I'm optimistic that something more generic will be found. It, um, um, the interest in exosomes is not just to have it on the surface so you can use it as a biomarker, but to just to enrich it a bit. So then you can appreciate the microRNAs in it, the mRNA in it, the DNA in it, the metabolites that are reflective of the cancer cell. Right. So you're just increasing the signal more, yeah. you know, yeah. compared to the background. Yeah. So I'm glad you mentioned this because obviously a lot of the questions that came up today um, in the meeting were about uh, exosome biogenesis and right. so how the, the huge plethora of, of um, proteins and, and nuclear material or nucleic acids that have been found in, in exosomes, how, how that arises and that there seems to be selectivity there and, and obviously the, the whole process of biogenesis. Right. So I, I think that um, the uh, biogenesis aspect of exosomes uh, is pretty much an open book. Yeah. I think that there have been some studies done uh, some proteins identified. I think that there is some real good science there, but I would say that bulk of it is unknown. Right. And the reason for that is I think that there's been there was some simplification of uh, exosomes uh, being this entity versus exosomal vesicles being another entity, right. micro vesicles being other entity. Mm -hmm. We use the term exosome as a collection of all exosomal vesicles. Okay, because there's size differences, right? But yes, but we can't distinguish them anyway, yeah. and we can't separate them. So, why, so all we do is we have a standard way of making them, mm -hmm. and we call them exosomes. If okay. somebody wants to call them exosomal vesicles, that's fine. Yeah. yeah. But the fact is that one day we have to then understand that within this collection of exosomes, are there different populations? Okay. And are they doing different things? Yep. But for now, not having any tools, not having any uh, access to such tools, we collect the whole thing mm -hmm. and we study it together. Right. And now, how all of these uh, come about in a cell to be secreted out, nobody knows. Right. There could be five different ways of doing it or ten different ways or maybe one different way. Mm. But I think that's all an open book and an exciting area right now in exosome biology. Do you think it might be an, an interesting avenue to, to explore in terms of, of preventing biogenesis, particularly from cancer cells? I would, I would think so, and I think that's a great question because if you prevent cancer cells from making exosomes, what would be the impact right, yeah. on tumor progression and in metastasis? Um, but the idea there um, requires us to do more experiments, to understand what specific proteins uh, or collection of proteins are important to mm. suppress exosome production without altering right. other pathways. Yeah. And, and then asking that question. And there are some proteins like that identified that tend to have some effect on biogenesis. Mm. Uh, but again, if it's a heterogeneous population, then you're only going to inhibit one way of producing exosomes, yeah. but not the other way. Right. So. so it's an open book. Yeah, yeah, an interesting challenge for the future. Yeah. Yeah, so one of the things that you discussed today that I think people were very excited about, that there's been lots of discussion about, but we haven't seen a great deal of data in terms of um, using exosomes to target uh, right. genes or proteins in, in cells. I think that's an exciting area, yeah. only because there's been enough research done to suggest that if we can uh, enclose drugs in particles, and get them to go to places in the body mm -hmm. and then deliver that drug. It's a great way to have specific therapies for that tissue right. and not have side effects. And here we have these trillions and you know maybe even a quadrillion exosomes mm -hmm. floating in our blood and all through our body. 
and they tend to travel yep. they go into uh, into tissue and they go uh, enter cells so why not we use their natural property to send drugs and that was our idea and that's what we're pursuing we're trying to understand how we can take these exosomes and put uh, drugs in them and then use their natural ability to float around the blood and enter cells that they will naturally enter and then if they enter a cell where there's some specific inhibition that needs to happen through a drug, then they'll have an impact. Right. So uh, not thinking about what the side effects are at the moment, the whole goal is to see how we can deliver it first. Mm -hmm. and, um, and then once that happens, then ask the question how efficient it is. Is it more efficient than liposomes or nanoparticles carrying these drugs? Right, yeah. It turns out that they are. Okay. Because exosomes tend to enter cells more efficiently because they have so many other surface proteins on them right. that enable them to fuse with the plasma membrane and enter the cell and actually dump the cargo, the okay. drug cargo they have. Are they selective so, for cancer cells? Or? So they are selective for cancer right. cells because cancer cells tend to take things in more okay. readily than normal cells. Right. Uh, because of uh, it, it's certain events that are amplified because of oncogenic events. Mm. And so I think that, that that particular property of cancer cells allow exosomes to enter more right. uh, into them and then yeah. dump the drug. And that those are the things that we're pursuing right now. Yeah. So how do you make the exosomes to, to package them? I mean, obviously you don't. So you can you make them. take them from the patients to individualize them? You potentially could take them from patients, but right. it turns out that uh, you could even take them from uh, cells like fibroblasts, and uh, right. which actually you know, if you inject them in mice, it doesn't do much. I okay. mean, so there doesn't seem to be any toxicity associated with them. So you can make them from any cell type that you think is benign enough that is not going to cause any problem. Right. Uh, you can, of course, personalize it, make it from the patient and engineer it and send it back. Uh, but from cells, it's easy because you can make, you know, billions and billions of exosomes uh, in, in, in a day. Yeah. So you can create the, the drug payload very easily. Right. So presumably you could use these um, these vesicles that are, you know, repackaging um, whatever drug it might be for, say, siRNAs or some of the kind of more the, the harder targets, right? Correct. Because and so, so I think yeah, absolutely. I think that one of the most exciting things is that we have ways to sometimes suppress bad transcripts that we right. don't want. Yeah. But the problem is how do you get that into the cancer yeah. cell? So yeah. I think exosome may solve that problem. Right. And so you're right, siRNAs, shRNAs. Mm -hmm problem. The other thing is that you could potentially even send things that cells don't readily take in, but exosomes will enter the cell and dump it in there. Maybe right. certain drugs don't enter uh, the right. cells, okay. but now exosome will sort of yeah. you know, disguise it and take it inside and dump it to have an impact in something that's inside the cell. Mm -hmm. You can target the intracellular machinery right. through exosomes. You don't have to only think about the surface of the cancer okay. cell to target like most monoclonal antibodies do. Right. So what, what sort of intracellular targets might you think about, say, say lysosomes Transcription maybe, factors. Or, okay, yeah. Transcription factors, yeah. Uh, the, the, you know, the first thing you can think of. Many of them are critical for cancer mm. and they're upregulated. And, and notoriously um, difficult and to target. Notoriously difficult to yeah. target through small molecules, etc. Mm. But here you could use this technology to really target that. Mm. Yeah, no, it's a fascinating field. It's, uh, yeah, certainly got. So, what are the future challenges? Do you think in terms of what's the? I think I really think with any young field like this, uh, you really need to do some fundamental biology. Right. We need to understand why do exosomes have what they have. You know, is it consistent? Mm -hmm. Does a cell in the morning make exosomes with a payload that is similar to a cell in the evening? that's making exosomes. What is the variation? Right. Yeah. And so we need to understand some of the basic biology so that when we are doing experiments, we know that there's internal consistency. Yeah. And I think that moreover, it looks like pretty much everything that's found in a cell is found in the exosome. But we need to catalog that. So I think that right. for the next couple of years, we're probably auditing and cataloging everything so we know what these uh, vesicles have and then what we can add to them to make them do what we need to do for right. treating cancer patients. On the other hand, maybe exosomes coming from cancer cells uh, can be inhibited, as you just said. So understanding that biology and biogenesis is probably going to be uh, very important, and that's a challenge because these are very small vesicles. They're not cells. How do you yeah. manipulate them? Right. So we have to come up with new imaging techniques, new way to manipulate them so that they can be generated in a way that we can understand uh, whether you do something to a cell, what happens, versus when you have done something different to the cell, what happens. So I think these these things are also technology dependent. So right. we have to get that up and so running. Move that also. forward too. Yeah, yeah. So exciting things coming for the future. I'm sure. I think so. I think <laughs> exosomes 
are going to be um, an exciting area of biology and I think that in the next five to ten years you'll be will be really um, uh, you know amazed by uh, the things that exosomes are doing in our body and how um, how they may be a uh, reflection of some primordial particles that have <laughs> put us all together as human beings. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks.